Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and I am bringing you um, what I think is going to be the last, technically the last layout in our 12 uh, layouts for Christmas this year for 2022. And this is a project recipe. This is the project recipe for Merry Little Christmas, which is a um, collection that came out in 2019. It was our holiday collection for 2019. If you don't have this collection, that's okay. I'm actually using papers today that come from our current holiday collection, which is seasonal site, seasonal, <laughs> yeah, seasonal sightings. Now my brain just kind of went on the fritz, but yes, I believe that's right. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're not going to be using the same papers that are in that are seen in this collection, but I think you'll be pleased with the results um, if you use the current collection, if you don't have this one. But if you do have this one, pull it out and, um, and use it. It is a super cute collection and um, it actually brought us some cute punches. Um, one of them was the tree punch, which we, the pine tree punch, which we're not going to use today. But um, if you have it in your stash, be, be, um, you can certainly use that. Um, I, the only reason I'm not using it today is because I just feel like using the holly punch will work better since I'm using holly paper. So that's why I'm, I'm using the holly punch instead. But anywhere that I put the holly punch, you can put a tree or any kind of embellishment that you want and it will be super cute. Okay, so um, you're also gonna need just a tiny little scrap of glitter, red glitter paper if you have it. That's just gonna create the holly berries for uh, the inside of our holly. And I have two punches out here today. One is the Holly Punch, which um, was on sale um, on the December deals, which recently um, are no longer available. But I think it may, I think it's still available. It's just not, not um, as good a deal now. And then this is the Trio Punch, one of the Trio Punch, one of the three. And we're going to use the circles that are. Um, on the trio punch. I'm not sure if we'll use the big one or the little one, um, but we'll see when we get that far. For now though, I'm gonna set those over here because we're not gonna use them until the end of our activities today. Excuse me, okay. You're also gonna need these middle or the medium circle in the custom cutting system and a blue blade. And um, I'll show you why when we get that far, but that is gonna, we're, we are gonna use that before we start assembling today. So you will need that. I have, as always, permanent and repositionable adhesive available as well. And we will use at least the permanent adhesive. I'm not sure we'll, yeah, we'll need the repositionable adhesive for our holly punch. So we will use that too. So if you're wanting to see the cutting guide, here's the cutting guide. We need three designer papers. They need to be designer papers that you like both sides of because we will be reversing them at points, um, at certain points. So you need to like both sides of three designer, three different designer papers. And then you're also gonna need two, two um, pieces of cardstock for your base. And I have the new, brand new red that we just came out with that I'm gonna use as my base page today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started cutting. I'm going to move my base cardstock, get that out of the way for a second, grab my trimmer. I'm going to use this polka dot -y patterned paper right here as my paper number one. And I'm going to be cutting this at five and a half inches. Okay, so we're gonna, we're going to do five and a half inches and then we're gonna turn it. So let's see, five and a half inches, if you'll recall, is the very edge of my trimmer. So I just put my finger along the edge and feel when the paper is right there at the edge. And that's where I'm going to cut five and a half inches. Okay, I'm gonna do that twice. Sliding my paper through. 
up against my upper bumper. I can feel my feel that that's even with my finger. Then this extra piece right here is one inch by 12 inches and we are going to use that so set that aside. We're going to use um, that entire piece so we're just going to I'm going to flip it over because we're going to use the uh, reverse side and that will help me remember that that's what we're doing. Then we're going to stack these two pieces of paper and we're going to cut them at nine and a half inches. So you will need to put your arm out on your trimmer and then we're going to measure nine and a half inches <clears throat> and trim that off. And then these pieces are designed to be used to punch your trees or whatever embellishment you're going to use. So you can do that if you'd like, or you can use cardstock or whatever makes you happy, but set those aside um, to punch with uh, if you should so choose. Okay, so we have these. I'm just gonna set these not on top of my directions because I need to be able to see those, but I'm gonna tuck them right underneath my directions because we're going to need those um, as soon as we're done cutting the other pieces. All right, so designer paper number two is this cute holly paper that has the white poinsettias on the back. And so this one is going to be cut the exact same way that paper number one was cut. So two pieces that are five and a half by nine and a half. So we're going to, I'm gonna just for the sake of consistency, close that, close my arm up, and I'm going to cut these two pieces at five and a half okay and then this piece we're going to use the opposite side of and these two pieces we will use the opposite side of one of these pieces also but for right now I'm more concerned with cutting the nine and a half portion of this one. So nine and a half. And then we're going to set these aside. And those can be used for punching as well if we want. Tucking those sheets underneath my directions. Now I'm going to grab Piece number three, this is the one I chose that has the wood grain and words on the back. This is going to be um, some mats for my page. And because the words are directional and the back is not as directional, I'm going to um, make sure that I'm cutting so that my mats are going to allow the words to be um, the right direction. So I'm going to cut this at four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. And then I'm going to cut a second one at four and a quarter. And then this third piece I'm going to cut at three inches. And actually, yeah, we'll just cut it at three inches. So three. Okay, and this strip is extra, so just set it aside. And then this piece, we're going to cut two three inch squares. There's one, and here's two. All right, and then this piece is extra. So set that aside. Take each one of these long strips that you already cut at four and a quarter. We're gonna turn it horizontally. We're going to cut the first the first cut we're going to make is again at four and a quarter, so you have a four and a quarter inch square. OK, 
Okay. Then we're going to cut one at six and a quarter. So you have a nice mat for a four by six photo. Then we're going to have a piece that is one and a half by four and a quarter left. And we're going to just flip that one over and we're going to use the reverse side of that one. Now we're going to cut this other piece the same way. So you probably could have stacked those pieces if you wanted because we're doing the same exact cuts. Four and a quarter, then six and a quarter, and then this piece is going to get flipped over. All right. So now we have all of our pieces cut with our trimmer. Set your trimmer aside. Now we're going to take these larger pieces that I mentioned to you before, and we are going to take our custom cutting circle, and we are going to cut circles into our designs. All right, so the, um, the first one, so that I don't get confused, let's go ahead and go back to our first paper, which was this one. All right, so our first paper, we're going to cut circles in this area down here. And the only way that I can help you know exactly where to put those circles, because it doesn't, doesn't really give you a lot of guidance as to where they go. So I'm just going to give you some guidance as to where they go, okay? We need this to be roughly a half an inch from the edge. So I want to, taking a look at this, you can see the blade is about a quarter of an inch from the edge of my template. So if I put my template edge about a quarter of an inch into my paper on both sides of that corner, then I should have my circle in roughly the right spot. Okay, so there's one circle. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over here in the same spot. So I want a roughly a quarter of an inch from my right margin and my lower margin for the edge of my template. And that will give me the right spot for my circle. Okay, so there's that one. Oh, and you know what? I just did that wrong. I should have flipped it over and cut it my bad. I'm so sorry. I hope you weren't doing that along with me because I just goofed that up. So what we could do is glue this back in where it goes. And we'll cut another one. Sorry guys, I thought I had everything figured out there. Then I looked at the instructions and realized I goofed. Okay, there we go. So, just like that, those two. And we'll just glue that circle right back in there. I think it will be okay. Okay, then these two are going to flip, one's going to flip as well. So we're going to flip this one over, and then these are going to be in the upper corners.
So those are the two or the four circles that we needed to cut. And we're done with our custom cutting circle. So our system. All right, now we're going to grab our bases and assemble because we are done with cutting. So here are, is our base paper. We're going to take the two strips that we cut and I am not a fan of the white poinsettias. I don't know why. I just, they're just not my favorite, but that's okay. No worries. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to do like this. Let me find this paper. Okay, so this one. Goes there. And this one goes. goes here that doesn't look right to me <laughs> hang on a second here maybe if we use this Give me a second here. I'm going to get this figured out. All right, so paper number one. That is this paper. That paper goes here. And paper number one also goes here. And... Paper number one also goes here, which is this one. All right, and then paper number two, which was this one, paper number two goes there and There and there. And I'm going to flip those over. Okay. I think. Is that right? A and B. And B is supposed to be the one flipped over. Okay, that's right. Oh, but this is supposed to be flipped over. But I don't want that. Do I want that flipped over? That just seems like it will get lost. But that's the way it, that's the way that the instructions read. So. I think we're going to just go with the instructions, the way the instructions say to do it. All right, so this is going to be about a quarter of an inch, half an inch, about a half an inch from the bottom. 
when you lay it down. And right along the edge of the center, half an inch from the bottom. And this one will be a half an inch from the top. And right up against this one you just put on. So no gap between those. Okay. Like so. And then This one goes right up against the other and from the top to the bottom. Okay. Same thing for the right hand side of the page. Do that backwards. No, I didn't. That's right. One, two, and three, and four. Okay. All right. So half an inch from the top, roughly, and right along the center border. It doesn't matter if you choose not to do a half an inch if you want these closer together, be my guest. Um, just be consistent. Make sure it's the same all the way around and you'll be golden as it were. You'll be grand. You'll be grand. Okay. This piece we're going to place in the hole that I cut that was wrong. So I have to find where it goes so I can get that put in there just right. Unfortunately, this little area is kind of sticking up there. perfect but less noticeable. Okay, and then we're going to just go ahead and get this piece on as well. Remember, flush to the side and touching both the top and the bottom. And I have just a teeny, the teeniest little bit of red um, base sheet showing on this side. So it is what it is. All right, now these mats are going to be sideways in some spots. Well, that was well planned on my part, wasn't it? Okay, so. I'll put a note when I save this to remind everybody to turn their paper the other way so that their words are going the correct way. Because the squares you can turn any direction, but these, these are now going the wrong direction, which is a bummer, but it is what it is, right? All right, so you're going to need these two squares now. And they are for photos as well. They can go here and here. 
or you can use one for a journal box maybe flip it over and write on the other side if you're using this paper or you can use it just for photos and then this piece goes down here underneath this photo mat and this piece goes up here underneath this photo mat just like that so let's go ahead and, and adhere these on And then these will be all ready for photos. We could flip this over and just do, maybe I'll do that, just because, I don't know, I, it bothers me when I cut something wrong and my pictures are then sideways or something about it is not in the right place. So, that will help pull some of that also. I like that idea. Good job, Kim. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. I like it when I can make a mistake turn into something that's better. Not perfect, but better. So I'm just centering these squares between right and left on this section and then centering it from the bottom of here to the top of my circle here. All right, so there we go. There's our main base. And now we're going to just make a couple of quick holly berries, or holly leaf combinations. I'm gonna use I think the big circle on this is going to be what I want. Then we'll just put one of each. you can see that this cute punch punches a, a really great sized circle. If you're making a Rudolph or something like that, this would be perfect. It's just such a nice size. And we have a couple of extra little tinier circles, which is nice. Maybe I'll just do a couple of those. One more of those, let's see. Okay. 
just in case we want them. Okay. So we'll set that there and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to just use this. I was going to use my dark green cardstock, but the recipe, the project recipe says to use this to punch our holly. So I'm going to do that. Actually, it says to use it to punch trees, but we're going to use it to make holly. Oh, and apparently some of my kids are home. Michael, I'm recording for the moment. I'm almost done, though. Did you deliver your goodies? Yes, we did. Good. Yay, mission accomplished. No, you're good. You're good. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> it's so hard for them to tell when I am down here recording. You need a little light that just flickers there. Tells us when you're live or not. Well. Nevertheless, all right, so now we're going to make some holly berries, woohoo, okay, just separating my holly from my other stuff so we can get all this extra off of here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use a couple of my holly berries in each of these little sections. And each of the little cutouts. kind of what they're designed for, just like so, right? And then we'll add our centers. We might need some more centers, because that's a lot more. That's more holly berries than I was expecting, which is OK. All right, so let's go ahead and adhere these on. I don't really like that you can't see them as well, but if I flip them over, you really can't see them as well. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and, using my repositionable adhesive, go ahead and use the green side. That would have been the advantage of using like a cardstock or something like that is they it would have been different enough that it would have shown up a little bit better when it's pattern on pattern but that's okay this will this will work for our purposes okay I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glitter to be the circle and if you want you can go back through and you can also add these little tiny ones but I would use pinpoint it adhesive to go ahead and put those on instead of using um, the instead of fussing with your repositionable adhesive because that's going to be a nightmare trying to get that to not stick to your fingers and stick where you want it to be. Whew. That would be a pain. 
And we don't need that. This is a holiday, so right? We don't need a pain. Oh, I forgot to put these down. Look at me, ladies. I'm thinking I'm almost done. Home stretch. And I didn't even glue the rest of these down. Let's get the rest of these glued down. So you can see what the advantage of um, using papers that are a lot more, have a lot more of a pattern to them with a recipe like this. Um, I chose not to use patterns with a huge amount of character to them and um, with it, with this particular project recipe I think it would have done better if my papers had more pattern. But it is what it is. Once the photos are on here, it'll look really nice anyway. two more and then that will be that I do think that the glitter centers on the holly kind of jazzes things up just a little which is fun and we could add some more of the smaller ones if we wanted but I think I'm going to leave it at that for just for now and let me see what else I am missing. Okay, so they use, CM Designers also use some stickers and embellishments and tucked them in near the trees and up here added a little title. So let's see if we can make that happen. So let's see. I've got We've got believe that will that will be really cute, I think, on here with all the red. I'm gonna pop that up with some foam squares. will fit on the end. Oh, it just barely does. Cool beans. Okay. Get it off. Okay, so we're going to put Believe right here. I'm going to use this cute little Santa hat because Santa, right? that over. I knew as I was setting that down that I was going to regret it. Let's see if I can get that to come back up. 
foam squares are just really adhere really nicely and they do not like to come back up for me. Okay, so scooting that over just a little. Then I can put this cute little Santa's hat right there. I like that. That's cute. Okay, what else can we do? We can do... Presents, maybe? What if we do some presents? What if we do one of these red presents? <laughs> My poor son. We have three daughters. And one son. We live in a house that's fortunate enough to have quite a few bathrooms, but for some reason, whenever he needs a bathroom, his sisters are always making them all busy. So it is sort of his lot in life to consistently be needing a bathroom and have his sisters get there first. <laughs> All right, so we've got Santa and a present and believe. I think we need one other or maybe two. What if we put of stars by one this one I'm liking this better with the embellishments added I think it was a little bit plain before but that's probably just because of my choice of papers get off there we go um, because with uh, papers that have a little more pizzazz, you definitely get more um, bang for your buck. All right, so let's add, what should we add in the upper left corner? Maybe maybe this one. Okay, just about there. Do, 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 do. like that okay I'm a little happier I'm a lot happier with it now than I was at the beginning all right so four by six goes here four inch photo goes here four inch square and then this photo would be a two and three quarters square both of these would be two and three quarters square just to give you an idea of what will work in the space all right, sorry I don't have my um, templates available at the moment to go ahead and get you that. Okay, 
not bad for our very last one. I, I do still have a couple of extra little um, things I'm going to do next week or in the coming days. Um, one for New Year's and another one that you could use as a re really cute border for a Christmas page. So I hope you'll keep staying in touch until um, till we get to New Year's. And then we're going to start some really fun stuff um, for Disney or um, maybe not for Disney, but for, you know, they're going to be my, for my Disneyland pictures um, using our Sparks of Magic collection. And, um, and then also our Hawaii trip that we took last summer that I haven't done any of the pages for. So fun things are coming in the new year and, um, I wish you the happiest of holiday seasons and hope that wherever you are in the world that you are with loved ones and know that you are loved and appreciated. Thanks so much for joining me. I do love and appreciate you for doing that. And, um, Hope that you'll tell your friends about my, my channel so they can have some fun with us too. Thanks so much and until next time I wish you many more creative moments. Merry Christmas.